Welcome to Class 8, Spiritual Economics, A New World Vision. Repeatedly we have stressed the point that economic conditions, no matter how dire they appear to be, are in the world out there. What counts for you is how you deal with them in consciousness. The key concepts in this lesson are crisis versus opportunity. I can learn from what challenges me. A new world order. How will the new world order affect me? Butterworth is going to lay out in this lesson something that's very, very vital to every person who really understands the ebb and flow issue of prosperity and money. Because money always ebbs and flows in your experience. And when it's ebbing, you have to understand that's a natural process, which means that the withdrawal of what appears to be the resource is just that which is drawing out so you can see what needs to be understood. So when the new comes back in, you're not only prepared for it, you're prepared to let it elevate and lift you to a whole other level. Let's begin. When you begin to see things from the high perspective of the ever-presence of God's substance, you will be in the creative flow of abundance, which will bless your life with sustained affluence, and it will also go forth from you as a prospering influence in the world. Certainly, every human heart longs for security and stability in financial affairs. But there's another side of this coin. One who achieves prosperity at once becomes an influence for abundance in the world. Jesus touched upon this when he said, I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. You know, one of the things I love about Jesus is that he was always teaching about this aspect of this Christ presence within all of us. And so when he says, when I am lifted, all will be lifted. So when you're lifted in the consciousness of prosperity, you lift me. And when I lift myself, I lift you. This is what raises all human beings, all experiences of God into a higher, higher elevation. When any of us are successful, that helps all of us become successful. Reading on. We all live and do business in the world, so it is not easy to maintain a high level of faith. We would do well to listen to Paul. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your mind from within. It is important to impress yourself often with the great reassurance of the unity principle, which we repeat here slightly paraphrased. Wherever substance is at all, the whole of substance must be. And because substance is omnipresent, the whole of universal substance must be present at every point in space at the same time. This is so powerful because when you finally understand and grasp the concept that the substance is around you in its entirety and there's not one place that you can put your finger in it or your heart in it or your mind in it where it will not respond to you in its complete and total, total experience of expression. That's the nature of what God is. And so Paul is absolutely right. Don't let the world squeeze your mind and mold it. Let that Christ principle within you, that spiritual principle of the all-encompassing, all-substantive nature of beingness, begin to mold you and let you see that prosperity is, in fact, your inheritance and your birthright. Reading on. Know yourself as a spiritual being and experience the fulfilling of the law, which rushes, streams, and pours into you, in terms of substance and supply and all that is required for success. When Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, he was saying that the breakthrough he had made into infinite mind prepared the way for Emerson, what Emerson called an inlet that may become an outlet for all there is in God. Now, now we're getting to this really, really key important point about spiritual prosperity is that we're an inlet and an outlet at the same time. We're an inlet for that divine idea, that creative order, which is going to rise up and become that outlet through our giving and our creative activity in the world. Those are the two things that you really must focus on, your giving and your creative activity in the world, where you're giving back constantly this creative nature of who you are in person. Reading on. In Orthodox Christian theology, the afterlife is a heaven of the skies where there are golden streets and presumably riches for all. It is almost beyond comprehension how this heaven up there became so rooted in the religious thinking of the Western world, especially since Jesus clearly located it. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus was not talking about a place in space, but a dimension of our minds, and he was saying that within every person there is a limitless life, limitless substance, and open access to infinite intelligence. Lack of any kind in human experience is the result of some sort of obstruction in the free flow of the creative process. 
When you begin to assume mastery over your thoughts, you become attuned to an evolution that leads to the unfoldment of the kind of things and experiences you desire. This is really important. The key to this is that we're not just talking about a place, we're talking about a dimension in mind. And we are surrounded by this dimension. And it's so exciting when you finally understand the dimension of life is, then life begins to respond to you and you get this tingling sensation of knowing that this response that's coming to you is not the old idea of who you are but the new idea of who you are which is now magnetized and attracting so much good to you that you just can't help but change and shift your point of view reading on there is no question that we are facing a world of crisis but let us look at the word crisis as the Chinese see it through the awkward process of translating it from English they use the symbols for two words, danger and opportunity. We are facing critical times today and down the road into the future. However, we have the marvelous opportunity to usher in a new world in which people of awareness will live with that, with what Thoreau called the license of a higher order of being. Isn't that amazing? Crisis and opportunity. When, or should I say danger and opportunity? Yeah, there seems to be danger. There's danger because guess what? The intellect cannot comprehend the whole truth, so it only sees a piece which looks, which looks very dangerous, which is going into the unknown. But then you can see there's an opportunity here, an opportunity to finally grow, express, and live my life exactly as I choose to. Not how the world sees me living, but how I choose to live it, how God created me to live it. Reading on. There is a great need to help children to know themselves as whole persons in a whole universe. A mind once stretched by a new idea can never go back to its original dimensions, Oliver Wendell Holmes. A fresh kind of life is starting. In the face of such an upheaval actually shaken by it, no one can remain indifferent. Swept along by the tide of affairs, what can we do to see clearly and act decisively? No matter what reactions we may have to current events, we can affirm a robust faith in the destiny of humanity. Tell hard they shut on. You know, Teilhard de Chardin was a wonderful, mystical French priest who was also an archaeologist. And he wrote such you know, things that were so far ahead of his time that he had this concept that there was this thing called the newosphere, which was that all-embracing substance in which we move and live and have our being. And he said there was, he never saw anything in all his archaeological study and all of his observations as a priest. He said humanity is constantly improving constantly increasing its own perception of itself and its own capability to move and live in this world. I believe that is true. Even though sometimes cataclysmic things may happen and certain groups may get wiped out, but the whole of life as a whole keeps moving forward. That's the most wonderful, optimistic thing I can think, and I'm so glad that he mentioned it. Reading on. We must face life with a robust faith, knowing that we will develop the keys to peace and plenty because we need them. An economic crisis, too, is the opportunity for growth. The great wisdom of the ages still lies undiscovered in the depths of humanity's inner self. The key still lies unused in the depths of our undeveloped faith. In the beginning, we all have a lot of sheer necessity. The world's economic problems provide us with the sheer necessity, as Browning puts it, to open out a way whence the imprisoned splendor may escape. We must help others throw off the shackles of poverty and move up in the mainstream of affluent living. We must know and teach that the kingdom of God, which is at hand, is a realm of substance that is omnipresent and omniactive. We must, let, we must get into the flow of healing life, guiding intelligence, and limitless supportive substance. I love that. Healing life, guiding intelligence, limitless supportive substance. Move into the flow. You know, Butterworth is so good at this because he really moves your consciousness right along. And whatever objections you may have, whatever reticence or resistance you may have to moving forward, he just says, stop that. Keep moving forward. Let that flow of sheer necessity be your opportunity to grow. So never, never view a problem as something that's standing in your way. Rather view it as something that's offering you a way to rethink your existence. Reading on. The word sin to a student of metaphysics means the frustration of potentiality. It is closely related to the Anglo-Saxon word sin, which was an archery term meaning missing the target. Poverty can only be corrected by helping people one by one to stir up the gift of God within them. People can begin with what they have and do not and do what they can right where they are, even if all they really have is a lot of sheer necessity. But if they will affirm that robust faith in universal order, 
they will experience a new consciousness that will guide A, will guide their hands, B, direct their footsteps, and C, put words in their mouth in a great process of transformation from indigence to affluence. Just one person who changes his or her thoughts, becoming alive with the idea of all sufficiency of God's substance, and staking his or her claim for prosperity and success in the world, not only begins to experience abundance in his or her own life, but also becomes a powerful influence for prosperity in the world. When I move toward prosperity, the whole economy improves. When we let go of old ideas of poverty, being godly, we help to create a renaissance of self-reliance or a return to self-made person. That's it. That's it. We're coming right back to that sense of self-reliance that Emerson was preaching, that Butterworth is reiterating again so we can get back to the self, the God self-made person. That doesn't mean we're an island. doesn't mean we're standing here by ourselves without God. It means we're standing in unity with God. So as that idea of God rises up and we begin to identify and unify with it and declare it as our own and give thanks and release it and let it go, then it becomes ours which claims our presence on the planet. God's substance staking its claim on us. Isn't that amazing? Reading on. <clears throat> we hear much about recessions and depressions as if we were referring to some greater monster that has the world in its clutches. The fact is we have been in the midst of a great depression of worker attitudes. If there could be a mass turnaround in the worker attitudes and productivity with people caught up in the ideal of work as the opportunity to release their innate potential, there would be a great reversal of economic lows and inflationary trends in a matter of weeks. The solution is a collective consciousness of the ever-presence of God's substance. To put it in the simplest terms, it means turning from a philosophy of in gold we trust back to the old-fashioned ideal of in God we trust. The simple solution is to turn away from the contemporary trend of rampant materialism. As students of new consciousness thinking, we challenge you to take hold of this prosperity principle of the omnipresence of substance. Become a part of a new worldwide epidemic of faith in the conviction that there is no need for poverty or lack anywhere. Believe that you are always in the presence of limitless substance which you form and shape and release through your faith. Keep the high watch of truth by knowing that wherever you are and whatever your experience, you are an inlet and may become an outlet for the flow of God's substance. And remember, substance is not simply spendable money, but that which gives value to everything you have, everything you do, everything you are. It is ideas, it is creativity, it is guidance, it is health and vitality. You cannot live without giving as you cannot live without breathing. Oh, boy. This is so exciting to read this stuff and actually know at the bottom and the core of who I am that what, what Butterworth is talking about here is that substantive nature of who I am and who you are at the core of who we are is this all-encompassing thing which gives value to life, gives value, doesn't try and take value, doesn't try and define value, doesn't try and assign value, but gives value to life. That is so key. Think of all your friends, think of your job, think of everything. You decide to give value to it, you're accepting it as a God expression of that all-encompassing substance. That doesn't mean you have to stay in the same profession. What it means is you see it as a doorway through which you are passing into a broader perception of life, which is expanding the range and extending the scope. So important. Reading on. The kingdom of God is at hand. Wherever you may be, you are an unborn possibility of limitless life, limitless intelligence, limitless substance, and yours is the privilege and the responsibility of giving birth to it. If you are not demonstrating supply in an orderly and affluent way of life, you are frustrating your own potential. It is important for you as a spiritual being to experience wholeness in every area of your life. Your next door neighbor will be influenced for good or ill by the kind of thoughts that rule your mind and manifest in your world. For the sake of humankind, think substance, think prosperity, and think plenty for all. And whenever you feel like you are alone, think about Canon Farrar. I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do, and what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. Here we come to the conclusion of this entire series. By the grace of God, I will do. You just have to reaffirm in your own heart, in your own mind, that you have the power, the authority, the glory, the responsibility, and the presence of mind to lift your life into a higher expression of being. 
Do not give up on yourself. When you solve the issue of your own inner sense of confusion, when you clarify that mind of yours, when you bring it into a, such a sense of synergy, which it rolls over a brand new idea, and you sharpen those skills every day, you lift everybody around you. Do not underestimate the power of who you are. I know that God moves by means of you right now into a higher and higher expression of what is truly the spiritual, economical presence of your powerful goodness in this world. And so it is. Bye.